I think it's fair to say that a lot of people these days have a bit of a love-hate relationship with social media. Potentially you might have found your partner through it, but at the same time you might get annoyed at yourself for how many hours you clock up scrolling through reels. So this is the question that I'm asking. Is having social media a net positive or a net negative on your life? Documentaries like The Social Dilemma have shown us a lot of secrets of the industry in terms of things like mental health, addiction, and the algorithms that keep us all hooked. I'm sure you know a lot about all these things already and that documentary is a great place to start so I'm not going to be diving too much into those subjects in this video. But instead I'll be talking about my experience as someone in their 20s who has tried having no social media whatsoever and also a hidden cost of social media which you might find a little bit scary. So how are we actually currently using social media? So the average person in the UK is currently clocking up about six hours of screen time per day, and about two hours of that is allocated towards social media. And that is the average, by the way, so I would definitely imagine for younger people, it'll be even more than that. Have you ever spent some time just going through people's posts and stories and looking at reels? And before you know it, 45 minutes is gone and you're not even out of bed yet. I'm sure you have, I definitely have myself and I'm sure you'll agree, it feels pretty terrible. Now imagine that somebody came up to you and they said, I need you to do something for me today. It's reasonably low effort, but it will take up about two hours of your day and afterwards you're not gonna feel that great. Obviously you just tell them to get lost, but with social media, we are essentially doing that voluntarily every single day. It's pretty strange, isn't it? I think it goes to show the sort of stranglehold that these apps have over so many people. The fact that we know kind of deep down that we don't enjoy doing it, and yet we can't really stop ourselves anyway. Dr. Andrew Huberman says that it's actually less to do with addiction and more to do with developing compulsive behavior, which I would definitely agree with. Like how many times have you locked your phone, put it in your pocket or put it down somewhere and it's almost like your hand just kind of reaches for it again without you even consenting to it and suddenly you're scrolling again. And we all know about that phantom vibration when you feel it go off in your pocket, you pick your phone out and there's nothing there. It's happened to all of us. So getting back to those two hours that I first mentioned. So per week that's 14 hours and per month that is 56 hours. You're effectively working a second job and how are you being paid for that? Even if you're not a social media influencer, I'm sure you are posting some content, but the majority of your time on these apps is most likely consuming content. So I'm just asking the question, what's in it for you? Because if it's not financial gain, what is it? Playing the game of status and validation online will be a bit of a driver for a lot of people, and I think we're all guilty of it to some degree. It's one of those things when you ask yourself the real question of why you're posting something, some of the answers that you get can be quite uncomfortable. And what about entertainment? Well, personally, I'm not really buying that excuse because how many of these short form videos do you actually remember after you've come off the apps? How many make you feel good or smile or laugh? Not too many, I bet. A lot of people will mention the ability to chat to friends and family, but I think when you've also got their number, I'm not really sure that excuse holds up. My point is that two hours of your day is very valuable and should not be taken lightly. So if it's not really making us happy, the only reason I could kind of understand to spend so much time on it would be if there is a decent financial incentive. Now, of course, building an audience and a community online and then being able to leverage that to create a business and a full-time living, that is different. But if you're mostly consuming content, that's just not gonna happen, is it? Time is money, as they say, so with those two hours a day and 56 hours a week, are you potentially leaving money on the table? Obviously, we all need some downtime, and I'm not suggesting that we can just allocate all of these hours perfectly, but time spent improving your skills, learning a new role, and getting into shape, surely those have to be a priority, right? And the crazy thing is, this is just social media. This doesn't even include the time spent watching Netflix and TV, which is, of course, more screen time. I personally believe that you can actually still get all the entertainment that you need through things like films and series, and keep up to date with all your friends and family through things like WhatsApp, even iMessage, and yeah, still work on a laptop and have spare time for your hobbies and other areas of self-development. So throughout the years, I've always kind of flip-flopped with social media, going through times of extremely high use and then mix of periods of absolute rejection of pretty much every app. It was actually in 2019 when I first decided to try and go a year without any social media whatsoever. 
And I have to admit, it's probably my most productive year and I made some pretty big strides when it comes to filmmaking and also my fitness. A change of location and job at the end of the year made me fall back into social media in the hope of new connections and not being isolated. Soon after the pandemic was in full flow and I was fully sucked into the social media vortex once again. However, as I sit here right now, I've just completed three months of not having any social media. I've got some pretty interesting things to tell you. Firstly, it just didn't really feel very hard and maybe it's because I'm getting older and I'm not really interested in playing the social status games anymore and my circle is pretty small anyway, but yeah, it just felt pretty easy. I'll be honest, I am probably using YouTube a lot more, but considering that I pretty much just only watch filmmaking content, I actually feel like I'm learning quite a lot. The reaction of others has also been really interesting to me because I did it a few years ago and I got very different reactions to what I've been getting recently. A lot of people now are actually saying like, wow, that's really cool, I wish I could do that too. Which I find really interesting because as someone in their 20s who's self-employed and a filmmaker, you would think that I would probably need it the most. Which brings me on to my next point, which is it hasn't really had an impact on my work. Thankfully, what I think really works well for freelancers is of course word of mouth, but just building good connections yourself anyway. For me personally, I've never really found Instagram a good source of work, but then I am probably guilty of not really using it like a work tool. So my final point is that I think we just need to remember that as ingrained in our culture as these apps are, they are still just apps. Some private company in America or China doesn't just have the right to steal your valuable time. And I think it's time that we just start looking at these products as what they actually are. They're not essential, they're just tools. Personally, I think it's just time that we took back some power and to stand strong with the view that the moment that these apps stop providing us value and the moment they're not giving us a net positive effect on our life, we can delete them. So without counting LinkedIn, which honestly I find really difficult to look at for more than two minutes at a time, the only app that I really used before doing this digital detox was Instagram. So I've had it deactivated for the last three months and honestly I'm really happy with the fact that I couldn't really care less about it. Now that I know that being without it has not made any impact on my friendships or my work, it's kind of lost its power over me. And yet, saying that, I am still quite interested in what it could potentially do if used purely as a tool. Going back to leaving money on the table, if used purely in that way to create business opportunities, is that then worth it? To create rather than to consume, utilizing it purely for work purposes and connecting to people in the same industry, maybe there is something there. So although further down the line, I may still dabble with these apps, I do know that they are just that. They are apps, they are tools, and the moment they're not serving me, they're getting deleted. So is having social media a net positive or a net negative? I would suggest that if you are purely the consumer, I think it's a net negative. But if you're the creator and you're able to just use it as a tool and not get hooked in, there is probably a case to be made. For me, one thing always comes to mind, and that is when I'm thinking about where I want to get to in life and the things that I want to achieve, is social media consumption going to help me or is it going to hinder me? Thank you for listening to me ramble on about this subject, which I personally find quite interesting. Hope that you took something from the video and I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. I'll see you next time. Cheers.